platforming games tend to be difficult to become iconic just because of the fact that the landscape as it is already has so many charismatic figures which dominate the landscape and how the genre is presented. I mean, let's think about this. In the 80s, we had Mario and Sonic. In the 90s, we'd had Banjo-Kazooie, Crash Bandicoot, Gek, Spyro, and in the 2000 era, we also had lots of wannabes start to emerge. I mean, who remembers Tack or Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, or Vex? I mean, what have those guys been doing recently? Well, today I'd like to talk about one such character that was supposed to help popularize platforming on the original Xbox. And no, I'm not talking about Blinks the Time Sweeper. I done that. No, today I'm talking about a game which only recently received a HD remaster for the Xbox One, a game I've been dying to play for ages, that goes by the name of Voodoo Vince. Get it? I said dying. This week was a really fortuitous timing for this video. I knew that Voodoo Vince was slated for a re-release soon, but was very surprised to see the game hit the Xbox One marketplace mere days after finishing my most recent gem video, which had me pondering what to try for the gauntlets. This game is based in the mysticism-laced bayous and carnival antics of New Orleans, with the story unfolding as two hired thugs break into a voodoo shop. Their goal is to steal a bag full of zombie dust for their nefarious employer Cosmo the Inscrutable, a 7th grade mystic dropout with plans of world domination. However, just as the thieves attempt to steal the zombie dust, the proprietor of the establishment, Madame Charmaine, interrupts the theft and warns them of their misdeed. Then as the dust reacts, loads of furniture start swinging around, and a chair knocks her out. Oh, damn son! Oh wait, no! There is great danger of- Oh, that'll leave a mark. However, as the thieves make their getaway with the zombie dust that are tied up Madame Charmaine, the dust also happens to give supernatural life and powers to a little voodoo doll on the shelf of the shop, Vince. Through telepathy, Madame Charmaine senses Vince's being and implores him to stop Cosmo's dastardly plans and save her and the world from his conquest. To this end, Vince has an array of useful abilities. Starting with his movement and basic functions, Vince can double jump, hover, punch his enemies to death, do a spinning move which also extends his jump reach, cause a head stomp for aerial attacks, and can interact with objects in the environment to pick up and place. Vince also has a very interesting ability implied in the title to use his Voodoo Doll application to his own advantage. Put simply, enemies can harm Vince, but death by any other means harms them. So for example, if Vince jumps into a blender, he resurrects unscathed, while his enemies suffer the same fate. Plus Vince can also collect beads from his fallen enemies, which when enough are collected, allow him to commit voodoo on himself at will. With a variety of unlockable and quirky methods such as meat cleavers, power drills, acid, and iron maidens to name a few. Plus, due to the nature of Vince's unique quirk, many of the game's environments and boss fights require inventive use of his suicidal tendencies. Now, concerning the pace of the game, it's very linear, but in a good way. Each level is connected to the other, usually barred by a puzzle or obstruction to fix before proceeding. The levels are full of enemies, but also collectibles. Oh, and if you like collectibles like in Banjo-Kazooie, you're gonna like this one. If you find 100 zombie dust bags, you get an extra life container. Most levels contain a glowing totem thingy, which gives Vince more fun animations for his voodoo abilities. Plus, a few levels contain spell book pages, which when collected create a pink skull, which you need to chase to allow Vince to store more voodoo powers. And occasionally, you'll also find cute little cloth stitched hearts, which give Vince an extra life. However, every time you die, you need to restock all your powers. Which sucks. And just to make sure you know where you are, every level is shown in the pause menu with the total earned collectibles in each level, and later on in the game, you even get a magical eye upgrade which lets you see the collectibles through walls to help aid you in finding them. And considering not only pitfalls, but also water instantly kills Vince, it can sometimes be frustrating to see all your hard earned powers disappear. But with that said, this game flows beautifully. There's not only a lot of interesting terrain to navigate with Vince's platforming abilities, but there are loads of vehicle segments with the usage of planes, fan boats, submarines, and monorails, so the game stays fresh as you go from level to level. There are also several fun cutscenes which never overstay their welcome to add some light humor. 
interesting if not simple puzzle based boss fights to tackle and an array of wacky puzzles with NPCs to interact with which require a bit of contemplation to figure out. The game also gradually introduces new concepts and abilities in the game which keeps things from getting repetitive and I don't think I ever found myself fed up with the platforming with exception to this game's last big open area which seemed a bit too irritating to traverse. Oh, and you may have noticed some of the music I've been playing in this video in the background. I gotta say, the music in this game is phenomenal. I mean, these types of touches in particular really impressed me when I was playing the game. The music, the setting, the enemies, the aesthetic, human characters all stand out from the crowd of most any other game I can certainly think of. Even the little easter eggs hidden in the areas of the game like this one which references Phil Spencer, the current head of Xbox. Brilliant. I mean, when you're fighting a boss fight, you don't usually expect to be tapping your heels at the same time, but man, does Voodoo Vince's soundtrack just kick things up a notch every time you need it to. Even from the little moments, like when Vince sets himself on fire, the music goes into a little frantic medley. But after collecting all there was in the game, conversing with skeletal jazz musicians, turtle scientists, creepy dolls, gumbo chefs, after exploring the French Quarter of New Orleans, crypts, swamps, a mansion in the bayou, and only after beating boss fights that can end up looking like this... This... Oh, and also, side note, there's also this... We finally end up at the end of our goal, the Carnival du Prave. After powering up the festivities with a few generators, we find our rival Cosmo at the helm of a giant robot version of himself. I, uh, guess. We hit some giant targets to harm it because, uh, video games. Then, we start climbing the damn thing. And after swinging, jumping, leaping, and bounding all the way to the top, we find it's powered by a brain. And then Vince stabs himself, which blows the brain up. And then as Vince rescues Madame Charmaine, she uses some of Vince's zombie dust to turn Cosmo and his goons into balloon versions of themselves, and Vince dispatches of them. The end. So there we have... Voodoo Vince. Now I gotta tell you guys, I was very impressed by this game. I'd heard that in the past a lot of people derided it as sort of a Crash Bandicoot clone and thus gave it average and scathing reviews, but honestly, I really enjoyed it and even with that extra lick of paint, you can tell the mechanics at the time were still pretty good as they still hold up today. And it's not often that we get a game that gets a remaster pretty much out of nowhere where it didn't really have any financial gain or make a dent in the market at the time. So I think it's really cool that we're getting a game like this so that new people can try it out, including myself. And the new bit of paint and the new look really helps. So if you're even slightly interested about playing this game, I would advise it. I mean, you can pick up the original for quite cheap these days. I believe I got this in a car boot sale for like a fiver. But the remake is also only like £10, and it's a crisp 1080p, 60 frames per second experience you can get on both Xbox One and PC. If you're even slightly interested, I hope you'll give this a try, because I think it's fantastic. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Now, uh, where was I again? Enough with the onions!